Hey everybody, what's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on you Thursday? I hope it's good. I hope it's been as good for you as it is for me. And I'm saying that knowing that inclement weather is coming to where I live. Yes, severe weather. Luckily, KRLD Storm Center will be tracking it for, eh, I don't, I don't want to get into it. It was all day. It was all day. It was all day. And it was fun. I had such a great time. And this has been an incredible day. An incredible day with a million things happening that uh, uh, <laughs> I wish I could tell you about. Uh, just know that's uh, been an incredible day. It's, uh, I could tell you some of that gobbledygook foreshadowing. But instead, later, and not too much longer, I'm going to tell you about slang terms from the 40s. But first, like, share, subscribe. It don't cost nothing. It's cheap. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, you know? Um, and it's wonderful. It's uh, wonderful. If you'd like to, you can go to the TomGullyShow.com. There you will find 270 handcrafted podcasts. One, one, only one of which is sure to beguile and entertain you. You can also go there and take advantage of our show store, which is filled with top quality name brand merchandise sure to add a warmth and charm to any home. A focal point of praise and pleasure for years to come. Uh, you can get there also by going to cafepress.com slash the Tom Gully show. And if you really want to do something big, and I'm talking big now. I'm talking something I'll remember forever. And people will talk about, you know, throughout the Tom Gully universe for ages. Uh, you can go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully show, contribute directly to this show. So I can buy, <clears throat> look at this. Isn't this pathetic? I've got a, a bread bowl that isn't big enough for this koozie. Do you really want this koozie to, you know, this just isn't. Like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Or you can go to Patreon where all the stuff I'm too scared to put out in, you know, the public is at. So there you go. There you are. Why don't we get to some of our chats before we get into the <clears throat> fabulous topic of the evening? This is a very, very special, special piece of chat. Now, Iris Sharice is a close personal friend of mine. And a friend that we have in common passed away several years ago that we both hold very dear. She is an incredibly talented artist and um, easy on the eyes. You know, she's a looker, as they would say in the 40s. And she says, this is a good way to start my morning in Australia. Every day in Australia. What a surprise, my dear friend. Same to you, Iris Sharice. And she's watching on Facebook, uh, where we're happy to have people watch, although... The preferred way to watch the Tom Gully Show is on YouTube. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now over 2,500 watch hours on our March to 3,000 and monetization. Ronald J. Bateman is here. He has been to the condo for Bushmills, and that's rare because I don't drink. I don't do no drinking, but I did that night. Let me tell you, I had my heart broke. It was awful. You should have been there. It was awful. Uh, the Red and Wild Bill says, darn that Google. Look where I landed. This could be interesting. Hey, Tom. He did the feeling lucky thing and just went to whatever random site and took him here. You poor man. You poor man. Hashtag gully heads. I don't know if that's an officially sanctioned nickname. I've always preferred gullerinos, but I don't really care. Uh, Joker is saying hi to folks and hello, guys. People. Oh, yes, I am a stone green host. I have been designated green by not even a show who ranks talk show hosts and uh, show hosts and hosts of shows and they rate them green orange or red and they have told me i am green in stone they said you are stone green i have to say that so people don't think i'm some kind of a hippie uh folks saying hi Aku Mugen says Frankie Blue was a legendary programmer in New York City. He famously got fired for talking to the air while incredibly tipsy. Well, I don't know if I go along with that or not. I don't think I do. Hello, Wild Bill. Good evening. Like and share and subscribe so Tom can get a tighter koozie. Look at this thing. I mean, look, it's just, see that? It's not, you could, you could, I could put my whole finger in there and it's still not. 
Diana O'Brien is here, of course. She's from Shrewsbury, Shropshire, at least at the moment. I believe she used to live near Dover. I'm not completely. Uh, to Irish Reese says, You are always a gentleman. Well, not always, sister. But in your case, I'm willing to make an exception. Uh, let's see. Bill. I was listening to some weirdo talking about being abducted by aliens on your New Year's special 2020. <laughs> I don't recall that. Uh, Wild Bill's being greeted. Everybody wants to greet Wild Bill. I don't recall that alien abduction story. I don't... It, 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 I'm not doubting what you say is true. I just don't remember it at all. Uh, Terry Nee says, We're have a gay old time. Terry Nee, by the way, this is from the Terry Knee Collection, and uh, he purchased a 20-ounce Tom Gully Show mug. That's a trash can with a handle on it. And if you want coffee, and I mean a lot of coffee, and I mean right now, go for the 20-ounce mug. Uh, alien abduction may have been me, says Ronald Bateman. I wouldn't doubt it. It sounds fine to me. It happens four hours into the special. I trust that what you say is true, but I... I can't. I'm putting this up just because I think it's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, George Neal, who was here yesterday, made that for me. Look, I got a new haircut. I still got a, just a little to do over here. I'm going to take a little right off there. It'll be perfect. But it's a little misleading because I had headphones on. This kind of headphones all day long. Okay. Uh, for the East Coast Peach Drop. I'm sure that has relevance in my life, but I can't remember what it is. I don't really know. I don't remember. I don't remember. I ain't so good at remembering. Oh, that's right. Dorset. Dorset, not Dover. I am so sorry. A pox upon me for a clumsy lout. Let's see what this one says. They didn't cost that many clams. Hey, Terry Neal's getting into the 40s lingo. I appreciate that. Let me get my thing open. You guys know how much I, uh, you know, I had to have to get my, my my thing open. Let's see here. Yeah, sorry, opened up the wrong thing. So I, I got a thing open, but it wasn't the right thing. Hey, by the way, uh, we'll be out of here by seven. Um, Eight Eastern time. Sorry, we'll be out of here eight Eastern time because there's a um, Shuli Network program happening. Then I think it's a Rico, and as you know, I will never impinge upon the programming of my good friends at the Shuli Network. They've been so good to me. They've been so good to me. Um. So the 1940s are, let me tell you, a heck of a show planned for you. It's, it's a heck of a show. Uh, the 1940s, I think if I could live in any time, it would be the 1940s as an adult. Now, yes, you did have the World War at the beginning, but the World War was, you know, here in the home front, it was sacrifice. It was, you know, cause we were all together and... Uh, and it's the beginning of what we know as modernization. First, electric appliances. The cars were stylish. The clothes were stylish. The uh, furniture was stylish. And they had some pretty fine slang, too. And I'm going to tell you about it right now. But before I do, I'm going to show you pictures of the 1940s throughout this. This is uh, ENIAC. This is like the first computer. It uh, probably had 1K memory, and it took two people to operate. Uh, so there, enjoy that. The first term I'm going to tell you about in 40s slang is armored heifer. Some of you may know what a heifer is. That's a, that's a cow. <clears throat> and armored heifer, well, it could evoke uh, the sight of a cow adorned in metal protective gear, but, but that's not accurate. The only time you'd cross, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, man, this show is just, the wheels are coming off the wagon here. The only time that you would come across an armored heifer in the 1940s would be when there was no fresh milk for your morning coffee. Instead, you would have to settle for canned or condensed milk, otherwise known as armored heifer or armored cow. 
okay? Because it had the metal can around it. According to Cassell's Dictionary of Slang, this term was the World War II version of an earlier nickname for this particular grocery item, which was Tin Cow. So, Armored Heifer. I don't know, she was, she was pretty nice. She tried to put on a pretty good meal, but then she brought out the Armored Heifer, and, uh, you know, we all know it was up. This next one I love, and I use to my joy uh, to this day, and I hope you do too, and I know you've heard it before, and that's cooking with gas. According to a 1941 newspaper ad, cooking with gas originated in vaudeville and indicated that a performer had arrived or had become popular, you know, with the public. In other words, now you're cooking with gas. Meant that the performer was appearing in communities where gas, instead of coal or wood, was used for cooking, which would be large towns. Now, whether that is true or not, the phrase definitely became popular thanks to the radio programs of people like Bob Hope and Jack Benny. You guys know how I feel about Bob Hope and Jack Benny. I worship Bob Hope and Jack Benny. Today, the most popular explanation of the origin was that it was a gas industry campaign to convince consumers to use gas instead of electricity when replacing traditional wood-burning kitchen stoves. And by the way, for those of you who have never had a gas stove, it cooks so much better than electric. It's so much better. Uh, you know, you get an even flame. It's just, I could go on and on, but cooking with gas. Cornball. I don't want to hear that cornball nonsense. Well, first, see what, oh, wait a minute. I got to switch out the picture. Uh, this is another thing from the 40s. That would be Orson Welles. That would be Charles Foster Kane. I'm Charles Foster Kane. It's Orson Welles. He was big in the 40s. Uh, genius. Cornball. Now, this was first literally a ball of corn. In 1843, cornball was defined as a sweet meat made of popped corn or, or just corn. And the word became slang in 1949, referring to an unsophisticated person. Obviously, you know, someone from a farm would have a corn ball, all right? Someone in the city would have that. Just two years later, it evolved to more specifically described to someone who has an old fashioned or a corny sense of humor, you know, get that corn ball nonsense out of here. So there you go. Now this one is so interesting. It is incredibly interesting. Duh. How many of us even to this day use duh? Well, guess what? This, this might shock you, so hold on to your hats. Uh, this was not born by Homer Simpson or anybody else. Uh, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, it originated in 1943 with its first recorded use in the Warner Brothers cartoon series, Merry Melody, starring Bugs Bunny. Unlike its more recent intent to be kind of insulting, in the 1940s, it was used to evoke stupidity. It was, duh. You know, it was, duh. In fact, Merriam-Webster's original definition for the word is an expression of actual or feigned ignorance or stupidity. But that term that we use to this very day was born in the 1940s as slang, daddy -o. Uh Here's another big one from the 40s. Here's looking at you, kid. Well, we'll all have Paris. I remember you wore blue. The Germans wore gray. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I mean, I could go on and on. Casablanca, also in the 1940s. Beaver. Now he's such an eager beaver. If you've ever come across an excessively hardworking person, you might call them an eager beaver. Although the phrase certainly alludes to the animal itself, beavers are industrious creatures building watertight dams lodges and entrances and eager beaver, beaver the eager beaver wasn't popularized along a river but instead along the front lines of world war ii according to a 1942 dispatch it referred to a soldier 
imbued with the desire to please his superiors with a show of exuberance for unpleasant tasks, which his buddies look upon with distaste. So this was an insult. Eh, that guy's such an eager beaver. It's kind of somebody that's kind of a suck up, actually. So eager beaver, that's what it meant. Now it kind of means somebody that, wow, he's, he's ready to get down to, you know, cases and do some work. So these next two are connected to each other. They are connected. By the way, this guy also became famous. Thank you, StreamYard, during the 1940s. And that was, yes, Mr. Frank. Sinatra, who at the time um, was kind of because the early days of Frank Sinatra, teeny boppers were the ones that really loved him, and he was super skinny. And sometimes in old Warner Brother cartoons, they will do a parody of him, and he is rail thin. But that's where he began in the 1940s. These two are, as I mentioned, are connected just as FYI is like modern day for your information. People in the 1940s had their own abbreviation. Important intel. If someone was hoping to obtain relevant or general, general information, they were in search of gen. Give me the gen, okay? And if they got all the info they needed, they were genned up. Not ginned up, but genned up. So it's like, did he give you the gen? Oh, yeah, I'm all genned up. Yeah, he gave everything. I'm all genned up. Don't worry about it. He, he spilled the, the whole the details. I, I'm all genned up. So I, I think we should bring that back just in our chat room. Uh, it's, it's not as good as phrasing, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Pretty darn close. I'm going to tell you about this next one here in a second. Just as soon as the computer got, go over here. I mean, it's just really great. Uh, this is just Carmen Miranda, who was popular. And she always wore a lot of fruit on herself. And she sang and danced. And it's just absurd. So that, I put that in there. Carmen Miranda. She's really great. This next one, and, and we use this one today as well. And as I mentioned a couple shows ago, as we get closer to present time, it's just common sense, there'd be more words that have made it to modern day usage. If you've ever listened to an unending lecture or read the fine print of an instruction manual, you have come across to some gobbledygook, which the Dictionary of Slang and Unconventional English defines as pompous, long-winded, vague speech or writing, heavily laced with jargon. Gobbledygook. It was first coined in a 1944 memo by Maury Maverick, who was then the chairman of the Smaller War Plants Corporation. He banned his staff from such language. Stay off the gobbledygook language. It only fouls people up. For the Lord's sake, be short and say what you're talking about. That's caught on immediately. Just a few months later, Maverick wrote about coining the term in the New York Times magazine. Gobbledygook. You know? Oh, man. Why are we going over there? I am so sick of her gobbledygook. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I'm putting this next one up, and I'm leaving it up to the end of this segment because it just makes me happy. This is one of the most beautiful actresses of all time. Forget the 1940s. This lady. Whoa. Susan Hayworth. Yeah. Wowie, Kazowie. I don't even know, but, but it's meant to be used here. There's three of them here. Three of them are connected together. They are hitting the sauce, sauce hound, and sauced up. You know, not surprisingly, when Prohibition ended in the early 30s, there's a bunch of different ways after that to describe the act of drinking alcohol and uh, you know, enjoying that for the people who do. By 1939, people were using sauced to describe being fully drunk. The next year, sauce was used to describe an alcoholic drink itself in John Henry O'Hara's Pal Joey, which is, I think, a musical on the way in which character almost began hitting the sauce. By extension, a drunkard, an alcoholic, per Cassell's Dictionary of Slang, 
were labeled sauce hounds or being sauced up if they were tipsy. Tipsy. Another good word. Hipster. Man, oh man. This word has really, this is a durable word because it's meant a lot of things over a lot of periods of times. But hipsters, as they are known as today, are young people attuned to the latest trends, particularly if they're seen as counterculture, particularly if most people aren't doing them. And the hipsters of today, oh my God. Once seven people start doing something, I don't like that. Anyway, um, so they're not all that different than the ones first characterized uh, during the jazz age. The early 1940s labeled um, jazz musicians and fans as hipsters. Hipsters was uh, sort of taken from the terms first used by uh, the jazz community for hep like hepcat or hepster, meaning up to date. In fact, the uh, term hepster or hipster was used in the creation of Hepster's Dictionary, listing 200 Harlem musician expressions used by the hepcats. And I, I sometimes at the beginning of this show say, hey, hepcats. This next one, if you've ever had uh, the occasion to use the term head honcho, you know, uh, he's the head honcho around here. Uh, you know, it's a word synonymous with boss. Hancho was actually adapted from the Japanese word hancho, which means leader of the squad's group. Now, the term was brought back to the States by the large presence of servicemen stationed in Japan during the occupation of that country following World War II. Now, this next one, I've never heard anyone use this, but they did use it during the 1940s. Those living in the 40s, Man, they loved rhyming words. They loved them. And khaki wacky. Khaki wacky is perhaps the most overt expression of this particular slang style. Uh, Green's Dictionary of Slang. By the way, there's a mountain of different dictionaries of slang. Green's Dictionary of Slang first cited it in 1943 in the midst of World War II and described it as a woman enamored of men in uniform. Yeah, that broad's khaki wacky. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That dame, that skirt, she's khaki wacky. I don't know that Rita, sorry, Susan Hayworth was khaki wacky. But if she was, I, I'd join the military immediately. I just, without hesitation, I would sign up. Send me the front lines. I don't care. Check her out, man. That photo, by the way, is actually the result of a misfired flashbulb. Uh, if you've ever seen the other photos in that particular photo session, they're wonderful photos, don't get me wrong. She doesn't take a bad picture. But that one, there's a certain thing that happened because of a malfunctioning light bulb. Just thought I'd throw that in there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very quick tour through slang terms of the 1940s. I'm going to leave Susan Hayworth's picture up. I see that Zeph is in the room. I will get to his um, chats in a moment. Zeph is one of my favorite people on this planet. He's very funny. And uh, he has the ability to say horrible things about me and make me laugh really hard. <laughs> He's good at it. He can say terrible, scurrilous things about me and make me laugh. Oh, uh, brother. Let's get to our chat room here. Aku Mugen says, Sorry, I'm working a second job preparing a Mac for color change. And I think you all know how painful that could be. We have uh, Terry Nee. Oh, I already did that one. Alien Productions, 4 Hour Special. I'm, I'm, I'm chewing my cabbage twice here. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, Tom has CRS disease. N no, I have RAL disease, remembers a lot disease. It's like, there's a lot in here. There's not room for everything. Most things, but not everything. And here's another thing, Wild Bill. 
And I've gone over this on the show many times because people go, hey, did you ever listen to your shows back? No, I never do, ever, under any circumstances. So if something happened on one of my past shows and it wasn't a huge, big thing or a reoccurring thing, I'm not likely to remember it. I'm really not. Uh, Terry Nee says, Tom's no Chrome Dome. No, I'm not. That must be another 40 slang. Uh, this fellow says, my father signed my mother's 1940 yearbook to a swell gal. Now that, that sounds like some 40s lingo to me. And that's a, that guy, he's swell. I use that one all the time. I also say that something's, I don't want to get into that. It's slightly. Uh, Rico at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's a Rico. I knew it was an 8 p.m. Eastern. I just know it was a Rico or it was an Auntie Karen or what it was. Uh, Lyndon says, I was born in the 40s. Tell me about the slang of the times. Uh, well, I just did. Aku says, I'm hempweed. Is that okay? Oh, no. Reverend Wild Bill said that to Aku. Um, ENIAC. I thought that's what I said. Jeepers. We love a cheerful chat room. Zephod is here. Big man's got slang. I'm a Bavro man from an Irish clan. Call me rodent gang. Yeah. Zeph likes rodents. He loves Bovril. Loves it. Loves it. Diana O'Brien and Peter Lake, if he was here, they, you guys know what Bovril is. And the fact that it doesn't really exist properly in the States is a matter of some contention to Zeph when he visits our shores. Terry Nee says, my buddy's dad received electricity on his farm, which was solely for the kitchen light. He had them rip it out because he says it was keeping him up too late. I know a lot of people like that. And I know a lot of people, uh, when I was a boy, my great-great-grandparents, they did not like the phone at first for that same reason. You know, They'd talk for five minutes and people would, yeah, he's yakking on the phone. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, Homer Simpson uses it all the time. He uses, oh, but there's duh, and then there's duh. So, um... Zephod says, I use duh in all the ways. I was, I was trained for life by cartoons. <laughs> uh, the Reverend Wild Bill says, Tom, you do the duh so well. You must have practiced. No, it comes to me naturally. Duh. 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 Diane O'Brien says, homemade rice pudding made with milk and little condensed milk is so delicious. It's one of my favorites. And this is a woman that makes the greatest fish and chips in the UK. So Zephod says, is this live? If so, please read my little rap two my comments ago. Um, hold on, I'll read it again. Big man's got slang. I'm a man from an Irish clan. Call me Roden Gang. Oh, there we go. It's best I could do. Reverend Wild Bill says, glitches in the matrix. Thank you. Frank. Iris says, uh, I found slangs fascinating. Australia has the most weird ones, in my opinion. They are so weird that I am still hard to remember or understand one. That's because you are from Brazil. Iris, easy on the eyes. There's a slang term for you. Yeah, she's easy on the eyes. She's a looker. Uh, Terry, sorry, Reverend Bob Bill says, just singing in the rain. That's from the 50s. R.J. Kelly's from Australia. He's a famous jockey in Australia. He says, good day, mate. Hope you're well. Right back at you. Hope nothing but winners tomorrow. Zeph says, uh, beavers are one of the largest extant rodents, and one of the largest rodents we are actually aware existed was a giant, like larger than a hippo-sized beaver thing. The more you know, Tom Gully Show cares. My son's friend calls me a fuddy-duddy. Wow, that's terrible. Susan was a man, Tom. What? No, she wasn't. Don't even... No. No. See, now I have to take the picture down. Because I know what you're saying is not true. Oh, what, by the way, the background today, that is the first photograph taken of the Earth um, from space. Which was taken in the 40s by a V-2 rocket. Hmm. 
very specialized backgrounds. I pride myself on them. Kahuna is here. Says, hey, gang. Oh, hey, gang. Zeph says the gen and gen and gen is still just about in circulation, mostly in niches where your elders know anything useful are still a thing. The pity is it doesn't get passed on or get past a point. Well, we're going to start using it here. For instance, you telling me that. Thanks for giving me the gen. Now I'm all genned up. Uh, people saying hello to each other, and that's great because I love a cheerful chat room. RJ Kelly says, we have a term for girls that go after jockeys. We call them silk chasers. Their name is silk chasers. That's right. Uh, RJ, so people saying hi to each other. Irish Sharice, also RJ Kelly from Australia. Well, she's Brazilian, but she lives in Australia. Perth, I believe Perth. Um, Aku Mugen says, I've learned I've been using a very old English term. Hello, hello, not hello, but pronounced closely the same. It's used in a moment of surprise. Hello, what's this? Hello, hello, hello. Um, might <clears throat> spring from the German, I don't know. Terry Nee says, what a shame Bovril isn't in the States. Terry Nee, you have earned a lifelong friend in Zephod by saying just that thing. Won't use beef bouillon cubes, won't use any other beef bro No, gotta be Bovril. 23 skidoo, says Jokerfish. We went over that in the 20s or 30s slang, I believe. Zephod said, bring back Bovril. Bring back Bovril. Uh, Randy Ramos, a bona fide chef, is in the house. And I don't know if Randy A knows of Bovril, B uses Bovril, or because he's a chef, has access to Bovril. Aku Mugen says, what's Bovril? Aku, I could tell you what it is, but I think it's better if Zephod does that, if he's still here. Because if I get one tiny little thing wrong, or I don't praise Bovril enough, I'm going to hear about it. I'm going to hear about it. Incidentally, we have about 29 minutes left in the program. If you want, go to Tom Gully Show, the Tom Gully Show, excuse me, dot com, and check out the 270 podcast, check out the merch store, or just go to cafepress.com slash the Tom Gully Show. Uh, for a wide variety of quality name brand items that you will treasure. Uh, you can also go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show. We ain't monetized yet. Old Tom needs the money. That's why. For those of you who accuse me of not remembering the past shows, I know I did a show with that on it. I know it. I know it. If you don't have a bottom Catterson Rice, rips the paper in half, then you don't, then you really don't have a price. And then we sell cars as low as possible, so you get a good car for a low price, and we sell lots of cars. Why? Because old Bob needs the money. That's why. Uh, Kahuna says, Note to self, buy return flight ticket before going to Vegas. Lost my rear end walking back to Minnesota. Sorry to hear that, Kahuna. You could always do the standby thing. And then you could get that breaking point where they go, oh, there's a really good price on this ticket, but it's the day after tomorrow. So then you have to calculate the price of staying in a hotel. It's... Sometimes it's cheaper just to rent a car or a U-Haul and sleep in the front of it. Uh, the Reverend Wild Bill says, the phone is on. That is correct. Our phone lines are open at 972-994-6822. Aku Mugen says, I'll be the one who gets it, Tom. Okay. Diana O'Brien says, Bovril used to be a hot beefy drink at the footy matches. Well, I'm waiting for Zeph to tell us what it is, but he probably left. Fair weather friend that he is. Ronald Bateman says it's like beef and kitchen bouquet. Yeah, I'm waiting for 
Zeph to tell us all. It is a beef broth, beef bouillon type product. And uh, Zeph loves it. He, he can't get enough of it. It's his thing. You know. He came over and stayed during the holidays, I guess. And uh, boy, was he mad about no Bovril. Joker, Joker says, I just looked it up. It looks gross. Well, sometimes, you know, different cultures, uh, reasonable people can disagree. I like to think. You know, yesterday's show was awesome, and we didn't get that many views. I'm sure it's no surprise that our show about that uh, movie with Linda Lovelace in it did really well. Even though it wasn't dirty, I didn't allow it to be dirty. Yeah. Diane O'Brien says, I've actually had an OXO drink today with two rounds of bread and butter. OXO. One of my favorite songs, Whirly Girl by OXO. Love that song. Terry Nee says, I like the way you think, Tom. I'm not better than sleeping in a U-Haul van, economical and roomy. Yeah, I mean, those are like $19 a day. Why would you get a hotel room? Just go to Walmart, park in that thing and sleep. Uh, Aku Mugen says, would they add booze to it? I, I think you can add anything to it. Uh, Red Mob Bill says, beef au jus. Anybody like that au jus sauce that you dip your roast beef sandwich in? I've had it, and, and there's been times when it's amazing, and then there's times when it's like, Ugh. Ronald J. Bateman says, Tom ran a smut free show about smut. I did. I'm. That good. RJ Kelly says, do you have a P.O. box or postal address you could message me? Would love to send you a little gift from me. Um, I do have a postal address. I could send it to you. If you message me on Facebook, that would be the best way. Either yeah, message me at the Tom Gully Show Facebook page and I'll... I'll uh, take the risk of giving someone my physical location. I could always send it to my employer. That's probably smarter, but that's the way to make that happen. Jokerfish says, I skipped the movie show. I'm too Catholic for that. Well done, Jokerfish. Well done. The Reverend Wild Bill says, love dipping in au jus. It just depends on where from. Lyndon says, Rita Hayworth's legs. Oh my. Well, it's Susan Hayworth. Rita Hayward. It's, I make the same make, mistake myself, so you're not alone there. You are not alone. But Susan Hayward. If you see a movie called Only Angels Have Wings, Calling Baranka, Calling Baranka, Cary Grant's in it, and it's an awesome movie. Only Angels Have Wings. Uh, Susan Hayward is in it very young, and who Papa Mau Mau. She's a very attractive lady. There you go. There you go on that. Yeah. There you go on that. So anyway, hope you guys are having a great Thursday. I've had a fabulous Thursday. I've had a fabulous week. Uh, I've had to do a ton of work to get this show off the ground because I've been doing other things during the day, which are the answer to Lifelong Dream. And uh, it's been fabulous. It's been fabulous. Mm hmm. Whoa, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I, I, I don't really know what that is, except maybe it's two eyes looking at me. 972-994-6822 is the number to call if you'd like to be on the air this evening on the Tom Gully Show. Hey, it's your call, man. Ball's in your court. Ball's in your coat. What is it? your message is promoting. I don't even know what that means. Why do people send me things? They know I'm doing a show here. I got a show going on. Let me see. What else is going on here? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yesterday we had George Neal pop in, and George Neal is the founder, I guess, of uh, Sonic Asylum Radio. He's also a bass player on the legendary 
heavy metal band called Halloween out of Detroit, Michigan. They've toured the world. They're amazing. And uh, we are good friends with Sonic Asylum Radio. I got to say, not the greatest heavy metal fan, but I'm a much greater one now that I've listened to their station. There's a gentleman by the name of Steve Bellow, who is just a fabulous guitar player that's associated with that channel. And um, I've told you many, many times, Metal Maiden Vicky's Metal Euphoria on the weekends, she does the best rock music interviews of bands that I've ever heard. Better than Nina Blackwood, better than anybody. She's amazing at it. So please uh, show them a little love occasionally. If you would, you can go to their Facebook page. That's where my show appears with their network. And uh, give them a little like, tell them Tom sent you. That would be groovy. <coughs> yeah. Diana O'Brien says chicken stew was on the menu this evening. Probably the best I've made. If I do say so myself. Yes, well, yes. Uh, I want me some of them fish and chips. That's what I want. Did Diana O'Brien talking about there? Anyway, Sonic Asylum Radio, we've been with them for a long time. And uh, some other networks have come and gone because they transgress the unwritten law with me personally. <laughs> and, uh, and, then they were, and then they were no more. So uh, give them a little love. Check out that guy. Oh, you didn't want to mess with that guy. Oh, no. Mm -mm. That guy was trouble. Trouble with a T that rhymes with P. I'm talking about pool. We got trouble right here in River City. Anyway, anyway, let's see. I got to vamp now for 20 minutes, 20 minutes of vamping. I think we'll switch to the backwash of this Mountain Dew that I bought this morning. Here we go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's good stuff. I'm running on fried chicken and gasoline right now. Not a lot of sleeping. There's Nicole Shields. I was just lying awake last night. And I've had this week. And Nicole knows, uh, if, if you go to my Facebook page, Nicole, you can see what I've been doing this week, which has been so incredible. And I thought to myself, you know, Tom, you are a cad and a bounder because you have not reached out to Nicole Shields and said hi in months. And uh, Nicole, I would say, was among my very best one friend. In, uh, <laughs> I had more than one. But she was a really great friend when I lived in Utah. And uh, she's the awesomest. She's the awesomest. Plus, she can drive through really scary mountain roads when there's lots of snow on them. So, you know what I mean? She's just like... Kind of a kind of a renegade that way. And so very good to see you, Nicole. We gotta catch up on the chat. I haven't been chatting and doing that sort of thing, especially this week. Girth Brooks. I think that name is funny. Nicole Shields says, I thought the same thing about reaching out to. Well, you did. You came to the show. You did your part. Uh, when push came to shove, you shoved and uh, made it happen. And Nicole, just just in shorthand here on my program, um, let's just say that I'm still laughing at all the same people we laughed at. And uh, <laughs> uh, privately. Um, anyway, uh, Irish Street says, well, daily, well, daily duties are calling. I will watch this video later. Wishing you all a wonderful evening. Lots of love, dear Tom. Irish, so good to see you. And uh, there's only 18 more minutes, actually 17 minutes and uh, 15 seconds. So really, you, know, you don't have to watch the rest of it. But we want you to come back because you're awesome. You're the awesomest. Uh, she's a really great lady. Aku Mugen said, due to the second job and rising food costs, I grill my lunch and dinner out of the back of my truck on a small barbecue. 
That's just good sense. And if I worked with the dude that did that, I'd go, no, that is a grown up. So well done. Uh, Nicole says, I usually listen, but I'm driving and can't text. Well, you don't want the sheriff to catch you doing that now, do you? Although the sheriff knows you and I are friends. So I'm willing to think he'll cut you a brick. No, he's not going to cut anybody a brick. Actually, he cuts lots of people a break. He's a great sheriff. That's all I have to say. Akumugan says, once it stays warmer, I'll break out the single gas burner and walk to make stir fry and other Chinese foodstuffs. I like foodstuffs. That's good usage there. That's very good usage. Um, you know, you could also just like cook on a, here in Texas, you can just bring a, like a reflective piece of metal and then, and then put uh, tinfoil down on it and it, you know, leave it out in the sun for five minutes and 7,000 degrees. And then you, yeah, that's what you do here. That's what we like to do here. Do I have any other stuff here? I can, eh, probably not. Ah, eh, probably not. I wonder what um, Rico will be about tonight. I only saw part of Blunder Years. The part I saw was hilarious. Reverend Wild Bill says, in Texas, you can cook on the pavement. It's so hot. I was talking to a guy today about last summer when it was like 110 degrees for three weeks or, or above. And uh, he was complaining and I was going, no, actually, I, I like that. I like that when I was when that happens. Uh, South Texas, yeah. Let's see here, uh, Nicole. I hope I would hope he'd cut me a break. Yes, he is a great sheriff. He's been into my workplace a few times lately. He's such a good guy. He is such a good guy. So dedicated at his job. So good at his job, and just Aku Mugen says might be able during the summer up here in Canada. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remois Bill, whoops, sorry, sorry, says, I remember waking up at 5 a.m. and it's over 95, too hot. Hey, you know what? See this? Hear that? This is an empty can of Red Bull that I'm holding in my hand right now. See it? See it? Hold the label out front. Red Bull, official thing I shouldn't be drinking on the Tom Gully Show. Now, I want, I want you to notice something. Not throwing it across the room. How about that? Huh? How about that? 110 is about 55-ish, right? You're talking about 110 Fahrenheit is what in centigrade? Is that what you'd like to know? Let's find out, shall we? I don't think it's 55-ish. It's like 30-ish or something. Uh, let's see. One, one. Come on, you piece of junk. Whoops. One, uh, well, uh, yeah, 110 is how much in cent Celsius, Celsius, that's what I'm looking for. Gosh, it's 43 degrees Celsius is what that is. 43 degrees. It's actually 43.3. Hey, today is a pie day. Did you guys know that? Because <clears throat> it's 3-1-4, March 14th, pie day. 3.14156. So it's known as pie day. Mathematicians go goofy for that. Reverend Wild Bill says, Red Bull gives you... <gasps> How dare you mention that word on this program? Diana Bryan says, Our magnolia tree is in Bloom Springs on its way to roll on summer. Well, you guys are about a month ahead of us in the seasons. So that makes some sense. You guys are a little bit ahead of us. Ronald J. Bateman says, The empty can being hurled across the room is also a metaphor for John's life. It so is. 
Yeah, that's right. In the 40s. There you go, Wild Bill. There you go. Um, yeah, in Europe, in some countries, I don't know that, that, that uh, the UK is part of this, but we call them June bugs and they call them May bugs there because their seasons arrive a little bit sooner. Terry Nee, who, man, this guy's a straight up dude. He's a righteous dude. So that's why they were handing out pieces of pie at Wegmans. Exactly. Reverend Wild Bill says, pear trees are blooming here. Well, it's Atlanta. It's pear everything. Hey, you know, uh, for the last time today, I'm going to tell you, ask you, plead with you. Um, go to the TomGullyShow.com. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. See what's there. Uh, a bunch of podcasts and some even some articles, actually, to be honest with you, to be fair. And then there's also the, uh, is that the rain coming? Uh, to be fair, that's what's going on there. And then so uh, you can also go to the merch store, cafepress.com slash the Tom Gully Show. And then you can also um, just go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show and just donate, just donate. For a, I don't want to get Sally Struthers about this whole thing. For about what it would cost for a cup of coffee every day for a week. Anyway, uh, great show, says Reverend Wild Bill. Thank you. And what do we learn tonight? Well, we learned that Bovril is got to be put on the menu or the you know, grocery store aisles somewhere soon, or Zeph is going to lose it. Uh, we also learned about slang terms. We learned that Nicole Shields drives like a pro across the mountain. We also learned that uh, I am, after the show, going to go right over here, like right here, and just take a little, just a little, and it's going to be perfect. And um, we learned that it's pie day, right? We learned that um, I have a deep affection for Susan... Hayworth, um, we learned that she's not a man. Let's see here. Reverend Mo Bill says, that's what I want, to go to a sports event and suck down a glass of beef gravy. Mmm, tangy. Uh, Nicole Shields says, yesterday put my driving skills to a test. She's got to go over a mountain. She grew up out there, and all the mountain people are like, oh, it's easy. It's all right. It's like, no, I, no, I drive a stick. It ain't easy for me. You guys are used to it. I love how they go. They'll be like, they'll be like the uh, peak with well, the peak of the mountains right here. Yeah, it is. But if you go down 300 feet and then you have to go up 200 super steep, it's still, you know, We learned Tom's choice in women, says Aku Mugen. Not really. Not really. There's, there's a very, uh, yeah. I mean, she's awesome. Don't get me wrong. She's beautiful. Uh, you know, glamorous type thing. But uh, there, there are other criteria. I mean, I, I, we don't want to get into it, but uh, there's other things that, you know. The Reverend Wild Bill says, Tom has good taste in women, and some he will give exceptions. Oh, that's true. <coughs> hey, Nicole Shields. Yeah. Now, yeah, she's spoken for. She's a married lady. But, tell you what, va, 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 voom. Yeah. Terry Nee says, pie is a kilogram of coccoline. Or, or it's coke. Uh, oh, hey, hey, hey. I don't even know how you knew that. Stop it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just ran out. I just ran out. Okay, I am closing the phone lines. I am closing the phone lines. Let's, let's just get that charade off the table. Uh, such as alive. <laughs> well, that's that's criteria number one. Yeah. Uh, Catwoman. Oh yeah. 
Don't make me bring my Julie Dumar autographed picture where she says to Tom, you're so smart. Unsolicited. I wrote nice things on her Facebook page and then her assistant or somebody contacted me and Miss Newmar would like to send you a photo. Um, oh, by the way, she sent me three. One big one, one copy of the big one that's smaller and then a different smaller one. She only, uh, no, she autographed all three of them. It's just the only one that had the message was the big one. Nicole Shield says, you're too kind. Thank you though. Hey, just the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Uh, Terry Nee says, it was the 80s. Oh, it was the 80s. Never mind. Forget the criticism. I forgot it was the 80s. Uh, Ribbon Wild Bill says, I miss Julie Newmar behind you. You know what I should probably do is I should probably take a picture of that and then I could make it one of my backgrounds. Huh? I could do that. I know exactly where it is. It's right down the hall in my closet. Right, right down the hall. Just mere feet away. Mere feet away. Yes. Well, we've got about five minutes left in tonight's exciting installment of the Tom Gully Show. We hope you've enjoyed learning 40 slang and everything else that we've done here. I made the mistake of uh, we have high humidity today, and I wore this really hot shirt. Uh, Joker Fish says, To Wong Fu. Love Julie Newmar. Yes, that's a great movie. Reverend Wild Bill says, Find a picture of the old wall and use it. I don't know that there is a picture. I mean, somewhere there's a picture of the old wall without me in it when I like, get up and go do something real quick. But it's got the chair in it. I don't know. I could... But man, me having to find all that, that that's not likely to happen. Uh, Nicole Shield says, have a great evening, everyone. Gotta go. Gotta go. Nicole, drive safely. Also, uh, Wild Bill, I bet you that eight-hour show has a moment when I got up and left. Although I might have put an art card up. I, I don't know. Uh, Terry Nee says, you have someone in your closet? Yeah, Julie Newmar is in my closet. Uh, Red Wild Bill says, I'll see if I can find one. All right. All right, man. Do hey, you do what you got to do. You actually, all you have to find is the video and the point in the video, and I'll take it from there. I don't want everybody to get nostalgic though and start tearing up a little bit. Oh, we got four minutes. You put up a card. Yes, yeah, I'm in the habit of doing that. I don't know. I might have dropped something at some point, or who knows? It's, it's really hard to say. Super hard to say. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to let you guys out of here a little early because we do have a special episode of uh, Uncle Rico. And uh, I don't want you to miss that. And I don't want to miss that. And stuff and things and, you know. So, I guess the only thing left to say is, till next time, we'll see you next time. Huh?